Hey everybody, so this next lab is about lever length and speed, which is pretty similar to the one that we did earlier in the week, which is lever length versus distance. The only difference is this one focused on which one went farther, of course, the distance, and this one will look at how lever length affects speed or how fast it's going to travel over a certain distance. Okay, so they're pretty similar. Do realize I will be entering scores for everything in this week since now they've kind of figured out some things. So that's why I've highlighted down here at the bottom that each one of these things is going to be entered in next Friday with a score, whatever score that you have on that particular assignment, just like we would normally do in class. If you have questions, um, you can just email me about you know a specific question in that assignment and I'll try to get back to you if you're having some problems with something okay so you will notice of course if you need to log in all that information remember is down here at the bottom if you don't remember what it is okay all right so with that then let's look first at the assignment So our assignment right here, again, is made to really be set up for a in-person or real-life mousetrap car that you can kind of see here. So we are, again, going to look at the length of the lever. So this would be a shorter lever if we attach a string here, a longer lever there. They're going to do it look a little bit different using the website, but it's pretty similar. In terms of scores on here some of the longer ones like this question and the very last one the partial credit will be on to kind of help you but many of the questions that are shorter the partial credit will not be on because i just don't think you're going to need to help any videos from here on in will be done the same way so some things you're just going to have to kind of work your way through like obviously we're not using a real one but again we get to time it Okay, based off the picture, you should be able to kind of see what things that we would be using in real life. You'll go past the stop sign to perform this lab. You won't be doing a data table because obviously we don't have a real life one. Rather, you'll skip down here to number five where it says analyze results. So once you have the first four questions done, skip to number five. Go ahead and log into your white box learning account. Turn on these eyes so that you can see the mousetrap car and what's going to happen with it. And again, we're going to need to use the mousetrap assembly because that's what we're going to do is we're going to change the lever length. So as soon as you click on that wrench, this is the stock car. That's the one that we want to use. Please use that one for perform performing the lab. And then you can switch things around once you're done with the lab. Use this one for the lab so that we know that it does work. Okay. So we're going to change this length. To make it either longer or shorter, you can decide. Again, I would use like 50, min, 50 millimeter increments. So if I want to go to a longer one, I can type in 150, hit apply, and you'll see that it'll move this and make this length longer. So there's different things that you can do with that. So if I want to make it 300, it made this lever length longer and moved it forward. So that's looking at the length of this lever again. <coughs> hit reset it'll reset it okay by the way I'm also watching my two twin five-year-old daughters today and two other five-year-old kids so you may hear them come in um, as they are just eating some breakfast now so just kind of realize that okay um, let's see moving from there then we are ready to do our lab you want to also click on this eye down here which is the performance which unfortunately will cover this up but we need that now, last time around, we looked at distance. This time around, we're going to look at speed. So you can kind of, in the class, I always did one meter, which would be down here. I would suggest you not do anything. You can kind of pick a distance, but I'm going to say maybe here I'm going to go eh, maybe right at the four meter mark or even the five meter mark because that's a pretty easy spot to see. But don't go any more than five meters okay so maybe three meters and then you'll kind of go from there okay so again what you're kind of looking for then is whatever that distance is i'm going to say five meters just because there's a nice little line right there 
you can see that it took 2.7 seconds to get there. So remember that time. Then go over here and change it. So you could change that to 200 meters. You could change it to 50 millimeters. But again, go in about 50 millimeter increments. Click your apply button. Go back over to that same distance and then see what that time is. And depending on what you what change you made, maybe you made it shorter or longer, then you're going to see, of course, well, what happened to the speed. Okay, so we're going to look focus in on time, not on how far it's traveling. Okay, then you'll go back over to your assignment and drag over which one you know went faster and which one went slower. This will immediately tr give you two points out of two or zero out of two if you got something wrong. Um, if you did get it wrong, then you know, it's pretty obvious what the answer is because it's going to flip-flop for you. But make sure that you understand what's going on with it over here because really that's the biggest issue. You need to be able to take this information and kind of your test is going to be at the end, hey, can I design a car that can travel fast? And if you don't know, hey, does making the lever arm longer or shorter make it faster or slower, well, it's going to be really confusing. You're like just going to have a really slow car, okay? And, and that can get kind of frustrating. So just kind of work through it a few times. Now remember, the key here is that we want it to go five meters as fast as possible. So we're going to look for that optimal spot for that five meter mark. I usually find, because remember in the last lab we did coasting, so that's the difference between this green and the red spot. I usually find that it's best to not coast until it gets really close to that five meter mark. Okay, maybe even after the five meter mark. And depending on your design, that's going to be in slightly different spots. So your design does come into play, but you really do want it to, you know, not coast way too soon, then it's going to be slow. Or coast really, really, really far into it. So if it's not coasting until the eight meter mark, well, that's a lot of power that you are taken care of after the finish line. So imagine you're going on a sprint and you keep sprinting at top speed for another three meters. It's like, well, why did you go do that? You should just sprint at top speed up to the finish line, then you can just slow down. So all your energy should be used up to that five meter mark so that you can go fastest. Because again, it's a sprint, not a distance run. So if you keep that in mind, that should help you find the optimal um, lever length for your car. Then kind of take a look over here. You can the offset position is not something I'm going to have a lab about, but this does come into play. There is a best spot for the offset position, which is the side-to-side -side position. You cannot change this unless you have a car that allows you to do that. So offset position means left-right. If you look how this car is designed, there's no way I can push this to the left because my house trap, of course, will fall through into the space between it. So you have to kind of think about how you've designed your car, too. That will come into play. The distance of your car front to back is going to come into play too. So if your lever length is too long, then, well, the car, if you think about it, this lever length is super long, and it's longer than your car, or your length of your car comes into play. So the length of the lever and the length of your car is important. So everything kind of comes into play in terms of that, in terms of how you design it. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. But that's really the fun part is figuring out how to design it with the lever length in mind because that will allow you to either shorten your car, lengthen your car, you know, have this to the left, right, those types of things.